Hey guys, so far we've driven all the way from Kyushu by Hiroshima and over Shikoku Island to reach the Kansai area, including cities like Kobe, Nara, Kyoto and of course Osaka, where our first base will be. Up and arriving and dropping everything off, as usual we decided to go for some food. We went for some curry. We were worried that we were missing out on something everyone else has realized about curry, so we have gone for the best curry in town. While it was decent, we still don't get it. Moving on. The next morning we headed out south to Wakayama to check out the samurai castle and spending our day in the surrounding park. On day two we drove out east to Nara. Nara is known for its deers running around everywhere and the beautiful scenery including temples and shrines.
Totaiji is about the biggest Buddhist temple I've seen as of yet and is truly worth a visit if you're in Nara. It hosts one of the largest bronze statues in Japan. We headed home while it was still light outside, casually passing a GTR or two. Japan just hits different. I used the chance since I still had some time left to primer up a few parts. I showed you the roofing I got at Euros before, and I sneakily went back and picked up a trunk clip as well while we passed them on our way through Fukuoka. Unfortunately, I couldn't do any more after that because the mosquitoes were eating me alive. Doesn't matter. Bit by bit, right? Next up was Osaka itself. Dotonbori to be specific. We've gone there during the day so we could check out the tourist area, but quickly realized it was way too hot. So we ducked into an arcade for an hour or two to cool down again. After we were nice and comfy again, we left through the underground shopping mall and walked to the streets of Dotonbori after all. Obviously, you don't go to Osaka without trying the best stuff they have to offer. Meaning, I found myself in a queue once more. This place is known to be run by an ex-sumo wrestler that was complaining about not getting big enough tonkatsus, so he started making them himself. Now it is known as one of the thickest tonkatsu cuts in Japan, with ultra-tender, juicy, pre-slow-cooked meat. Even I was struggling with that, but I powered through. We decided we have had enough from the heat and popped back to base for a few hours to come back at night and see how it looks then.
before calling it a night, we went shopping. Shopping as a foreigner in Japan is decent, because in some stores you don't have to pay tax, making something substantially cheaper. I picked up a nice gadget for an upcoming event. There are a few things in life better than ramen for breakfast. Feel free to debate me. It was needed as well, because next on our list was Osaka Castle. When we got Mac, it cleared up and I got to do tidbits again on the R34. As you can see, the trim around the door looks in a bit of a sorry state, and the carbon wrap used to have better days. I'll get to that, but first I want to get rid of these wind deflectors. I get it, it's a love it or hate it thing, I fear I'm in the latter category. The removal is super easy, there are a few bolts underneath the rubber seal, and once they're out, you just gotta slice the double-sided tape to pop them off. This is the side without, and over here, this is the side with the deflectors. Yeah. I'm not so sure anymore. I definitely have to clean that up though. After removing both sides, I figured I could drop them off at you know where, of course. While I was at it, I decided to drop the ugly wing finally as well, to make space for the trunk loop. I told the guys I want to sell a few parts and they processed them right away. While they were calculating what they were going to give me, we checked out the goods they had on hand. They called me over and handed me 5,000 yen for everything. Again. As luck would have it, as soon as I removed the wing to reveal the bolt holes, it would start raining again. I taped them off and we ducked into a mall on the outskirts of Osaka to get some food and chill out until the evening. And with that, I'm gonna end part one of our Kansai stay here, because the videos seem to be getting longer and I'm really struggling condensing all the footage we're recording into a watchable impressions reel. But as always, thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll be visiting a shop that I've been waiting to visit for a decade. So make sure to tune in. 
See you then.